Howdy folks, Jeff Sankstack here. I want to give you a brief tour of Adobe Audition and then show you how to remove noise from audio clips. And the noise we're going to talk about uh, today is uh, generic noise, noise that runs through an entire clip, not like a clap or a click off a vinyl record or a cough or something like that. But we're talking about noise that uh, exists throughout an entire clip, like a fan in the room or a, a burbling brook or a, a motor or noise that comes from an electric fixture like a fluorescent light. Uh, we'll talk about specific things, those narrow focused uh, noises in a different tutorial. Here we'll talk about just the generic stuff. First of all, here's Adobe Audition. It looks a lot like other products in the Adobe Creative Suite, which is a good thing. Its familiarity is good. The upper left-hand corner is the equivalent of the project panel in Premiere Pro. They call it the Files panel here in Audition. Then you've got an effects rack where you can apply effects, uh, several effects, a uh, fairly large number of effects to individual clips uh, where it's non-destructive. You apply it and you can make adjustments and uh, you know, listen to your adjustments and, and later you can make it uh, where you apply it permanently to a clip. Or you can also apply the effects to tracks inside a multi-track session. And then there's a little history panel which allows you to go back up after you've you know, made some changes and gone, oh, I'll just back up a little bit. And you've seen that before in other products. There are these editor panels. There's the editor panel that you uh, view a waveform in or a spectral frequency display in. And then there's also an editor panel where you look at the multi-track session. And it gets confusing when you talk about the editor panel because it refers to both. But generally when we say editor panel, you mean the waveform editor. There's also a thing called a mixer which uh, will become visible when you work with a multi-track session. And then you can also create a multi-track session which has multiple tracks as you would work with in Premiere Pro, for example, or even After Effects. But here we're going to work specifically with just a file. So we're just going to work with just the waveform editor, which can be switched to the fre spectral frequency display editor. So let's go track down a clip. And the typical way that uh, folks who watch these tutorials would do it would be an easy shortcut of just double clicking here. But the the lamer way, the standard way, is to go file, import, file. That's the slow way, or control or command I, where you got to take your hand off the mouse to type something in. The easy way is just double click here in an empty space and go get the file we want, navigate to whatever folder you need. In this particular case, we're going to go right to the place I want to go and import this thing by double clicking on it. And there we go. When you import something, an audio file, it, it typically shows up here in the waveform editor. Uh, which they, up here it says editor, right? Over here it says waveform. That's where the confusion arises. This really should say waveform editor. It's just editor. But nevertheless, we're in the waveform editor right now. And here is the waveform, which doesn't look like a wave right now. But this is my voice. I'm just speaking here. and I'll show you how that works. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, etc., etc. Or maybe that's Abraham Lincoln. Someone almost had a tape recorder back there in Gettysburg. Let me take a look here at the uh, waveform. Right now it looks like there's some green stuff, but if I expand the view by pressing the plus key a few times, and by the way, as you expand, it'll center on the current time indicator right there. I'm going to keep on going. There's the wave. And if you're expecting to see a nice smooth wave, I'm sorry, that's not how audio really works. Audio is full of what are called overtones and undertones. When my vocal cords vibrate, they're not just uh, a set of two pieces of uh, flesh banging back and forth against each other. Uh, they have these little sort of uh, sub vibrations going on inside, they're little wavelets going on inside that create uh, higher pitches than just my regular pitch and create all kinds of extra little things going on. That's why voices have resonance instead of sort of boring electronic tones which do have smooth waves. Voices, instruments, all have these little overtones. And a good way to see that is to switch the view from the waveform view to the spectral frequency view. To do that, you can do one of two things, and you'll probably end up doing the one method, which is the drag method, uh, ultimately. But the quick way to do that is to click on this button up here, the spectral frequency display, and that shows it like that. If I click it again, it goes away. But the way you'll probably end up doing it is just by dragging this guy up and down, because you can adjust the relative height. You have it either both of them showing, just one, just the other. So Waveform spectral frequency display. And the frequencies are start down here at low frequencies, the base frequencies, a few cycles per second, going up to very high pitch above the human singing voice to about the peak range of human hearing when your human hearing is really, really good. Most people over the age of 30 cannot hear uh, frequencies above about 14,000 cycles per second right about here. So what's strange, though, you're probably thinking, wait a minute, if this guy who's speaking now has kind of a bass baritone voice, that'd be down here around the 400 level, right at the bottom. What's all this other stuff here? 
you know, the color represents frequencies that are present, and the brighter the color, the louder that frequency is there. So why am I getting frequencies way up here? That's because of those overtones I was telling you about, my little, those little wavelets that go on inside my vocal cords as I speak. So, you know, here you see the waves, but here you see the actual frequencies. It's pretty amazing. What you also see in the spectral frequency display is noise. It's really easy to spot noise. It looks like dust, little speckles of uh, dust here that indicate just usually that that's a, that kind of thing is like a hum or a hiss or wind or something like that, which in this case is that fan that was running. And it creates these little speckles of apparently dust particles that, uh, uh, you know, are not very loud because they're dark. The darker they are, the quieter they are. But it's, But the noise is present, and you can hear it. I'll just play a little bit. And maybe with the compression of this video and over the internet, you might not hear that that well. But you can see it popping down here in the VU meter, the VU volume unit meter. So there's obviously some sound going on there. Here's my voice. Four score and... So my voice gets up to minus 12, and, uh, and the sound of the room is down here, minus 42 decibels, dB. Audio is measured in decibels, and when you work in digital audio, the loudest sound is zero decibels, and then the quietest sound is minus infinity. That's silence. So that's how things are measured here. So right now we're hitting around 42, and I get a 42, and my voice comes in up here somewhere. Still, that's, that's the noise we want to get rid of here in this exercise. We want to get rid of this noise. And the way you do that is tell Audition what that noise sounds like. It, it can figure it out on its own using what's called an adaptive noise removal process. But we want to do a different way where we tell it specifically. This is the noise we want to remove. And the way you do that is by selecting an area, a certain time area. You can, you can select part of the noise, like just this hum here, which you can see is like a 2,000 hertz hum, which is probably caused by the motor on the fan. You can select just that area, but for what we're doing, we're selecting the entire room noise. And to do that, you make sure you select the uh, time selection tool, the so-called I-beam tool up here, and just drag across some unit of time where, where there's no dialogue going on. There's no one speaking. It's just the room noise, which is, by the way, a good reason why you should always get some room noise when you record something, so you can go back and remove that in room noise if you care to. Or you can place it between uh, sound clips to make sure that you don't have a funny drop in sound from one clip to the next. So anyway, here's the room noise. We've selected it. And now we need to go and tell Audition this is the noise print we wanted to capture. And the way you do that is you go to Effects up here in the menu bar. Effects, Noise Reduction Restoration, and off to the right, Noise Capture Noise Print, the top line, Capture Noise Print. Click on that and apparently nothing happens. But in fact, Adobe Audition did capture that noise print and saved it as a little uh, internal file. Now we want to go back and reduce the noise throughout this entire clip. So the way you do that, you, the way you do that is to go back to Effects, Noise Reduction Restoration, and this time Noise Reduction Process. When you open that up, it opens up this little dialog box, and uh, it shows a few things. It, first of all, it says the noise print is the currently set noise print. You can always save a noise print, by the way, but this, we'll just take the currently set one. It's easy to get. And this thing shows the bottom of the noise, the, the yellow is the top of the noise, and the green is currently the amount of noise you're going to remove. There are two sliders down here. There's some advanced thing as well, too, but uh, that gets a little beyond the scope of this simple tutorial. There's two sliders that you use to uh, adjust how much noise you want to remove. and uh, uh, how much you want to reduce it by. So there's two sliders. There's, 100, there's a thing on the top that says noise reduction. So you, you say, okay, here's the green thing is the uh, noise. And as farther I go to the right, the more I'm removing. And as it approaches the sort of the extent of the noise right there, the yellow line. If I say remove all the noise, sometimes that causes the uh, spoken part or the, you know, any kind of narration to sound a little tinny or warbly. But Sometimes it doesn't. depends on how loud the noise is originally. Here the noise isn't that bad, so this may not have any effect at all on that. And then once you decide how much you want to remove, you say, okay, how, how much do I want to reduce it by? You know, you can reduce the noise by just a couple of decibels. It would be a very subtle reduction, or you can reduce it by a, a lot of decibels, make it just basically go silent if you go that high. And to figure this out, you, it's best to listen to the audio. So you can go over here and you can select a different audio area there. You can have this little loop on to toggle the loop switch on, and then if you press the play button, you'll preview it. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers. And as it's looping like that, you can adjust these little sliders to suit your taste. 
In this particular case, because the noise is not that loud, uh, it won't have a dramatic effect on the spoken part, so you can really crank these guys up and get rid of all the noise. So I'm going to try that and go full bore here. Brought forth on this continent, four score and seven years, which sounds pretty good. And so now that we've done that, now that we've set, set our settings, we need to apply it. You can apply it to the selection, which uh, is certainly uh, an appropriate thing to do under some circumstances. But for this particular purpose, we want to apply it to the entire clip. So you just click this little button here, select entire file. And now you click the word apply. And it processes it. And now it's done. Now you've got this cloudy look to this whole thing because you've selected the entire clip. When you select an entire clip or selected an area of the clip, you get it's white up here in the waveform view and kind of cloudy down here in the spectral frequency view. To get rid of that, just click anywhere inside here. Now look at that. The noise is gone. Isn't that phenomenal? That stuff is gone. And it's gone not only here, but it's gone inside where the narration is. And let's hear how the narration sounds now. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. So the noises are gone. The fan noises, the noise from my computer, the noise from the lights in the room, that's all gone. You can clearly see that here. It's not as easy to see it within the narration, but uh, most of the noise has been removed from the narration. If you zoom in here, you'll still see some noise, some of this kind of purple stuff here, but this large amount of noise here is actually just my taking a breath. That's not the noise from the fan. And a new nation. Can you hear that little breath take? being taken there. So we got rid of virtually all the noise. The audio is much cleaner. There's two more things we can do at this point. We can trim things down. If I just take my eye beam and drag it like that, I can press delete. That'll trim that down. And go over here and press delete there. And I, now I've changed this clip not only by applying the effect to it, but I've also trimmed away the uh, the dead air at the beginning and the end. And whenever you change a clip by adding an effect or by trimming it like that, you'll see a little asterisk appear here inside the files panel saying that, okay, this clip has been changed. If I now close uh, a close audition, uh, I'm going to get a message saying, do you want to save this? And now what happens with audition is that you do what's called destructive editing. When you change the characteristics of a file, it, it will want to change the original file. So your best work practice when working on Audition is to use a copy of your original and not touch the original. Uh, and in this particular case, uh, since we're using the original, the way to work now is to save this under a different name. So if I go File, Save, I'll go File, Save As. I'll go back, and instead of having it be exactly the same thing, I'll just say uh, Edited, like that. And then I'll know that this is the one that I messed with. And I'll keep it in the original form it was in, which is a Wave PCM 40 thousand hertz mono 32 bit. I'll click OK and now it'll show up under the new name without the asterisk after it. So that's uh, how you can then take a file you've worked on uh, and then uh, export it uh, and do export it under a different name than the original file just to make sure you don't uh, destroy the original or do the workflow I mentioned which is to work with a copy only from the very beginning and save your originals someplace where you can't uh, stumble across them by mistake. So that's how you can easily remove uh, noises from across an entire file, do a little bit of trimming and then uh, save that file under a new name inside Adobe Audition.